About three years ago, I made a lot of videos about this one phenomenon that back in 2019 gripped the world. The phenomenon in regards to the star known as Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Say it three times and he appears behind you. Wait, that's from another movie. Anyway, you might already remember the story, but back then the scientists were not sure what's actually happening to this iconic star. One of the brightest stars in the night skies. For some reason, it started to dim with its overall brightness dropping by quite a large amount. As a matter of fact, the change was quite visible in the night skies if you knew where to look. But then, within a year, by February of 2020, it stopped dimming and started to brighten yet again. And ever since then, for approximately two years, it more or less remained the same. With some of the more recent observations using other frequencies, such as infrared light, determining that not much has actually changed around the star, suggesting that it wasn't really going through some major changes on the inside, and more importantly, suggesting that it's definitely not going to go supernova as suggested by some of the media sources. This was not going to happen for at least 10,000 years or possibly even longer. And following several major observations in various frequencies and very thorough investigations by some of the best scientists around the planet, it was more or less confirmed that what was happening to Betelgeuse was very likely a result of a major emission from the surface that ended up creating a relatively large dust cloud. With the dust cloud when released from the surface essentially blocking the star in just the right way, which resulted in the overall dimming effect. And this is pretty much the explanation that everyone accepted. It kind of made sense, it also was supported by evidence from various telescopes, and because Betelgeuse has now been acting relatively normally, there was absolutely no reason to suspect that it's going to go supernova or do anything else extremely unusual. But there was still one question. What exactly was this event? What happened to Betelgeuse three years ago to make this happen? And I guess more importantly, is it going to happen again? Can it happen again? And that's exactly what the recent article from NASA tries to explore. And it's actually by the relatively famous scientist who was actually the first to ever image the surface of this particular star using Hubble telescope back in 1996. Back then they were able to produce these beautiful images you see right here and were even able to resolve the first ever hotspots on the surface of another star other than our own sun. And so the same scientists wanted to see what actually happened here and wanted to once again use Hubble to investigate this and to try to resolve the mystery once and for all. Although in this case they didn't just use Hubble, they used several different observatories. For example, Stellar Robotic Observatory in Spain, one of the telescopes in Harvard, and even one of the telescopes that's currently orbiting the Sun, known as Stereo. Although in this case the data from the Hubble telescope was actually the most beneficial and the one that was able to help us resolve this. And well, first of all, and I guess that's the more important confirmation, this star is not going to go supernova anytime soon. The amount of mass lost from the star is completely insignificant compared to what we expect from a star that's about to go supernova. But when compared to some of the more earthly terms, the mass loss was actually pretty huge. Now in terms of the actual mass, Betelgeuse is at least 16 times the mass of our own sun. It's also, as you can see from this image, not particularly spherical. That's very common with these giant stars. As a matter of fact, there was a study not so long ago, just a few months ago, that sort of established that for these really, really large stars, it's generally relatively difficult to establish where their center is. Normally in astronomy, to determine the center of the star, the scientists will usually look for the center of brightness. But for a typical red giant star like Betelgeuse, the actual center of brightness, the center of maximum luminosity, tends to jump around or basically dance around. And it actually kind of moves around everywhere. It looks like this. And so determining where the actual star is located and thus determining its distance becomes kind of problematic. Which basically suggests that these stars are just extremely active, they're very unpredictable, they're not particularly permanent in terms of shape and in terms of the actual activity on the surface, and they're very dynamic. They change all the time. Which is why here it does not look like a sphere and sort of resembles an unusual blob. A blob that's not particularly dense either. It's almost like some kind of a very large cloud of plasma rather than the actual star-like object. But because this was such a bright star and a very well studied star, and also a star with very predictable 400 day long pulsations, 
that have been studied for nearly 300 years, when suddenly the star experienced an unusual dimming effect and the pulsations also disappeared, this definitely created one of the biggest mysteries in 2019 and is still technically the bigger mystery today as well. Beetlejuice, by the way, is somewhere right there, it's the orange star you see, with this here showing us the iconic Orion's belt and the Orion nebula that you can see surrounding the belt. And so the scientists behind this recent study really wanted to find out where did the pulsations go, are they going to come back, and what caused the unusual dimming effect. With all of the observations in this case, once again suggesting that the star lost a huge part of its visible surface, resulting in the production of what the scientists now call surface mass ejection, or SME for short. And obviously this is a type of a behavior that's never been seen anywhere else before. To some extent I guess it's comparable to the coronal mass ejections, CMEs, around our own sun. And that's of course when our sun does something like this, throwing off a huge amount of mass from its surface, but when comparing the numbers, what happened around Betelgeuse was about 400 billion times larger in terms of mass, equivalent in mass to several times the mass of the moon. And that's completely unimaginable by current standards. That's something the scientists believe that the stars could not actually do, but looks like they can. And when this chunk that was several masses of the moon in size left the surface of the star, it very likely fractured a huge part of the photosphere of the star, with the gas then cooling down to form a dust cloud that essentially blocked the light from the star as seen from planet Earth, with the dimming effects lasting for just a few months. And this particular event, the first such observed ever, has also dramatically affected the star with Betelgeuse still recovering from all of this even now. For example, various convection cells that are present inside a star, which normally drive the pulsation and the circulation of material, might have been disrupted by this event and are still sloshing around uncontrollably, unable to produce the regular pulsations. That's of course why the regular pulsations are no longer visible. And although the telescope observations suggest that the outer layers could already be back to normal, the surface itself is still quite disturbed and is still bouncing around creating a lot of chaotic behavior. And so it will probably take some time before the photosphere can rebuild itself and before the star can return to be normal. And I guess more importantly, it also suggests that this is definitely not the same mechanism as the coronal mass ejection. It very likely has nothing to do with magnetic lines or magnetic fields and very likely was produced by something entirely different. Currently it's believed to be an entirely new phenomenon, but the scientists now believe that it could have been caused by some kind of a convection plume several million miles or kilometers across that bubbled inside the star and produced this unusual expulsion of material. Or in other words, it was some kind of a star bubble, millions of kilometers in size. But I guess more importantly, this event shows us how these huge stars generally lose their mass and how they prepare themselves for the eventual supernova afterwards. But how long the recovery stage is going to take before Betelgeuse returns back to normal, that's not the question we have the answer to. But we might have an answer if the scientists are able to observe this in the infrared light by, for example, using the James Webb telescope or by conducting additional observations in other frequencies as well. Because the dust here is only visible in the infrared light, this might actually help the scientists see some of the previous eruptions if they ever happened, and it might also help the scientists track where this gas is going and how this gas might evolve the nebula around it, or maybe even determine how long Betelgeuse actually has before it explodes. At the moment though, because this is still an entirely new phenomenon and it's never been seen before around any other star out there, all this is basically news to us. Still an exciting new observation and definitely a really important one because the evolution of these red stars is crucial to the evolution of the rest of the galaxy. And since Betelgeuse is such an iconic star, anything that happens around it is also extremely intriguing and extremely important. But I guess until we learn something else, or until new discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. We'll definitely talk more about Betelgeuse and other red giants in some of the future videos. For now though, that's pretty much it. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.